Hi, I'm Roland Telsen from CBIT Australia and I'm here with Dr. Alex Zielinski, the Director of the CSIRO's ICT Centre. G'day Roland, how are you? Not bad, pleased to meet you. Thank pleased you for taking you. your time. My pleasure. Um, let's start off, how would you define the global digital economy? Well, the global digital economy for me is actually really the existing economy, which has been, its, its productivity has been underpinned by IT and improvements to IT. So in the end, I imagine the whole economy will evolve into a, a form of digital economy. So the digital economy, while you might say it's, might be, it's the IT industry, to me it's not the IT, the IT industry. If you look at many industries now, they're totally dependent and more increasingly becoming dependent on IT and communications advances. Uh, you might just say, look, look at agriculture, what's happening in agriculture, the climate modelling, they're looking at there to predict crop yields, the water systems that we're using and wanting to know how much water we've got in the country, even controlling how much water we deliver precisely. That's all IT enabled. And uh, so the ICT sector is really driving, I think, uh, it, uh, productivities across the whole economy. And for, for the way we look at it is, the econ it's like you know, you know, the old economy, new economy, there's only one economy and it's going to be digitally enabled. How strong a player is Australia in economy? How strong a player are we in driving it forward? Australia's always been a very big uh, adapter or quick adapter of new technologies. We've not necessarily always been the, the, the country that produces the new innovations, but we're some of the country that actually takes the new technologies and applies them, and sometimes in innovative ways. And I think, you know, we might say, where's Australia's Google or Microsoft or, um, but uh, those uh, companies, we might not have them, but what we do have is very large uh, companies, say, in the mining sector. And part of their efficiency is the fact that they're big users of innovative IT. So uh, you have to actually uh, look at it from the point of view of, you might look at the sector and say, well, where's the IT companies, or where's the research, etc. So what we find is at CSRO, we've taken the approach that we want to drive innovative IT into all these various sectors. So for instance, we're developing technologies where you put a collar, a collar on cattle and be able to know where they are at all times and actually even looking at ways we can actually create virtual fences which is remove fencing uh, and be able to through sounds and stimulus be able to you know, bring the cattle to various places or isolate sick cattle and, uh, and herd them effectively so that's a, 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 a and it's really IT driven and uh, so I, what we're seeing is uh, the technologies and that's an innovative technology, it, uh, it's new technology, it requires new research, but it's very niche. And I think that's what Australia has to look at. We've only got a, uh, a, a, a country of 20 million people, so we really need to think about how we selectively pick the areas that we can make a play. How important in driving that development and adoption of digital techniques is collaboration with groups like um, I assume groups like NICTA, uh, DSTO, but also the commercial sector in Australia. Well, we, you know, we've got a, a, an approach that's, you know, no, I think, institution or organisation has all the answers. You know, research is becoming increasingly interdisciplinary. For instance, to do that work I just described to you with the cattle, uh, you know, putting collars on them, we could just go off and do that ourselves without working closely with agricultural scientists. Uh, in you know, livestock industries, and uh, you're working partnering with them. Uh, likewise, if you develop new developments for wireless communications, you know we're not a product organisation, CSO, or a national science agency. That means we must have a commercial partner who can take that innovation and turn it into a product for the customer. And likewise, it's also increasingly happening is that products and and technologies are becoming more complicated. So it's actually you know, innovation occurs when you take one technology combine it with another to create a third technology. And invariably those technologies exist in their various organisations, so you bring them together to create a solution. How important do you see events like CBIT in uh, driving innovation and forming partnerships? Well, CBIT is, uh, you know, it's one of the uh, great trade shows of the world and, uh, you know, it's great to have it here in Australia also. And it's a way to bring people together, you know, it creates, it's a, it's a a networking event. It, it's a way to showcase new capabilities and it's uh, a place where you make those connections where to show off you know, some ideas and forward thinking 
that we're trying to you know, to bring into the whole place. So, I mean, I, it's, I see its role of you know, the organisations such as DSTO, NICTA and CSRO is to be thought leaders or showing where technology could possibly go and, uh, and then show some of the concepts or ideas we've got in these areas and how we're pushing forward. And that actually can create some sort of sense of excitement or uh, a sense of where things could go and that may be people who attend the conference making a particular form of business. That direction may actually line up with their strategic go forward area that they're interested in so it's a way of actually creating new opportunities. Well thanks for your time Dr Zelinski, really appreciate that, you've given me some great insight there. Thank you. And hopefully CBA can drive our innovation further. Great, so, I, I really look forward uh, to the conference this year. That'll be great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.